Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Yuva, and today we're going to get some insight on starting up a foundation. My guest today is Jeff Hoffman. He's the president and CEO of foundationar.org. Uh, welcome to the show, Jeff. Thanks, Anthony. Glad to be here. Yeah, no problem. So usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? Um, well, when I, I'm from New Jersey originally, so I went to the University of Scranton for one year. And uh, once I was there, I had a great opportunity to play soccer there and then transferred to the University of Maryland where I walked on and played football. Oh, fantastic. So now take us through the process uh, when you were in high school. Um, how did you go about finding the schools? Was it freshman year of high school? Was it senior year of high school? How did, how did it all begin? Well, unfortunately for me, I didn't think of that there was a an avenue where someone could help or kind of guide me through the way. So, you know, back in the late 80s, it was all you know, word of mouth or someone recommending you to someone. And so every opportunity I got for soccer, which I was pursuing because I was a pretty good soccer player in high school and um, were really just Division three opportunities. And when it was all said and done, I came down to like three or four schools and ended up choosing on the University of uh, or University of Scranton, where it was a great experience. Um, but I realized there that I wanted a little more than what the University of Scranton could provide for me. So, Okay, so then how did you end up uh, choosing uh, the University of Maryland after University of Scranton? Um, funny story, because whenever I was there, I'd say to everybody, hey, if I got an opportunity to go to Division One school, I'd walk on to football. And so I looked at several universities transferring after my freshman year, transferred to the University of Maryland, and I had a great opportunity to walk on there. Um, you know, I proved that I could could, could compete because I was an athlete. Um, was able to stick around, and you know, I played there until I graduated. So it was a great, a great experience. Wow, fantastic! So now, um, when you're at University of Maryland, um, what are some of the classes that you start taking that you're starting to think, well, you know, I'm going to need some of this stuff for when I graduate? Um, what are you What are you taking there? No, it, it's funny because when I look back, I, you know, I still didn't really know what I wanted to be or do. Now, I knew I wanted to play sports and potentially go into coaching, maybe. And if I thought it through a little better, I would have made probably better decisions as far as the classes I took. With that being said, you know, a lot of young people today, they're not really certain what they want. So, you know, what I always advise people is, listen, don't pick a school based on what you want your degree to be, but based on things that interest you and that they can support at those schools. And so for me, I ended up going the criminal justice route, which I effectively didn't really utilize for anything but a platform to go back and get my teaching certification, which I have. Um, but, um, you know, I took all a variety of classes. I took sociology. I took a lot of criminal justice. I took, you know, some of the English classes and all of them were really good. I was able to use that as a foundation for what I do now. So now, tell me a little bit about the football team while you were there. Um, were they good? Not so good? Uh, we were probably be we should have been better than what we were. We uh, they had just changed. Bobby Ross had just left for Georgia Tech. Uh, Coach Krivak came in uh, and with the players, you know, did a really good job. You know, we were competitive, but you know, when you look at where we were and how we finished up and, and the talent level that we had. Yeah, it's, it's all you could always have been better. You always think about that one player, the the one game that could have had a different outcome. And, um, but we had a lot of really talented players that played with Neil O'Donnell. Um, Zizadine Nadur Raouf was there, and he played in the NFL. Clarence Jones, uh, Farrell Edmonds, Larry Webster. I mean, there were a ton of talent on our team. And, um, you know, again, it was just a great experience to be around that level of football. And to this day, we keep in touch. We do a lot of good things, um, get togethers and things along those lines. So it was a great experience. Great. Now, a lot of, a lot of uh, people that have been on the show, they, they, uh, they talk about, you know, it, uh, football is all about uh, the sport, not about studying. Did you, did you see any of that when you were at college? Is that anything? No, you know what, in any school, because I coached in college football for a lot of years as well, um, it's what you do with it. You know, you get tools at any school. Like if, if it was Harvard or any other school, if I don't take advantage of what the university is offering me to help me not only be a great student athlete, but the key part there is student. If I'm not a great student, I'm not going to hang around. And 
you know, there's study halls, there's tutoring, and when parents go on tours with their kids, and same with the students, you know, they say 99% go professional on something else. And they say it for a reason, because it's true. And so if kids today would understand that, and when they're looking into a university, don't pick the university just based on, hey, they have a great program, or, or this, that, and the other thing, because coaches change. Um, when it comes to it, when it's all said, you're going to need that education to get a job. And to make sure that they are giving you the proper support, whether it be study hall, whether it be tutors, whether it be after class sessions with the, the teachers or the TAs. You know, students and, and adults need to realize that and understand that and capitalize on that because what you're doing is really leveraging your athletic skill to kind of offset the cost for going to college and, and getting it. And you and I both know, you know how important having that degree is to getting a job. Yeah. And, and a lot of people also say uh, the friends that you meet at college are the friends for your life. Do you, do you still keep in contact with a lot of those people that are on, were on your football team? Yeah, you know, we have a reunion uh, once a year in Atlantic City. We all get together. One of our teammates got injured in uh, professional wrestling. So every year we try to get together down there. And um, you do keep in touch. And based on what you go career-wise, and you start working with others, and it all kind of circles. Those are, those are the times of the years that are, that is a time in your life that you're really coming into your own and, and sometimes you need the support of friends and, and that's where you really kind of build those ties and connections. Yeah. So now, how does one come from graduating college and then starting up a foundation? Um, what, what was the process that you took? <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't a direct journey, that's for sure. You know, I've been I've been fortunate to have a lot of success in the coaching profession, and I coached for a lot of years, from starting in high school, working my way up through college, and you know, mid majors to professional and, and scouting on the uh, you know on the NFL and the CFL. But at one point, um, you know, thanks to you mostly, I uh, ended up getting into helping student athletes, and in doing so, we realized that. You know, it's one thing to, you know, be super smart and to be a super athlete and to have a ton of money behind you. That's one. But majority of people aren't that. There, There's things that they need support in. And so, you know, I guess the long story short, and we can kind of circle back and fill in the details, is there, there's a lot of student athletes out there that aren't as fortunate as others. And, you know, listen, I wasn't rich by any stretch of the imagination. But I was fortunate to have parents that worked hard, put away money, did whatever they could to give me the opportunities. Not everybody has that same advantage. And so when you talk to student athletes that come from maybe a, you know, a, a, maybe an inner city or Title I school district where they may not get the same education that I received, or someone who you know, may not be fortunate to have parents that are willing to and able to provide them everything that they need, those are student athletes, and, and if they have great, great, or even very good, great. There's, there's a thing that I kind of believe in is trying to create hope. And I think that's really more of an issue with society. You, you look at everything that's happening now. A lot of the issues come down to the education and hope. And, you know, the foundation was really kind of built between you and I talking about how can we help you know, student athletes that don't have a resource or do not have the ability to network or reach out or connect with as many possible coaches out there to let them know that they're available. You know, if you have great grades, you know, and, and grade I'm describing above a 3.0, you know, you're just a very good athlete. There's a lot of schools out there, especially when you go away from the footballs and the basketballs of the world that need student athletes and they don't have the recruiting budgets to go find them. So, you know, I thought in our conversations, it was going to be a great opportunity to help those student athletes and to be able to get them the exposure that they need and to give them the guidance and the education and the understanding of what needs to actually happen when it comes down to trying to find school and give them hope to be more than what they are currently. So tell me a little bit about Foundation AR. What, what, uh, what does it do? How does it help the students? G give us a little insight. Well, we're fortunate we have a really good partner in the uh, NJTL in Trenton um, that, you know, we built a really strong relationship with. We started with one or two student athletes and kind of showed them how instead of just giving a $1,000 scholarship or a $2,000 scholarship away 
Now that's fantastic, and it's really coming from the heart, and it really served a great purpose. However, if they ended up investing that into the student athlete, i.e. through Athletic Resource Foundation or FoundationAR.org, what we were able to do is to take those student athletes that had very good grades, that were good athletes, that were good people, and be able to get them the exposure to colleges. And what it turns out is you know, they were able to go to school, I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, Anthony, I think we're at 10 or 12 student athletes from over the years there. Yep. Pretty much almost all of them have gotten financial packages where it didn't cost them very much. And the majority of them went, ended up going to school pretty much at no cost or out-of-pocket costs. And, you know, I can remember the first person we worked with, the, the thank you note that we received saying, you know what, my daughter wasn't going to go to college. And if it wasn't for you, um, meaning Athletic Resource Foundation or AR or Foundation AR, um, my daughter wasn't going to go to school. And, you know, she should actually be going into her senior year this year. And it's actually pretty exciting. And, you know, I'm excited for it. I'm glad we were able to play a part in her getting the hope to do and be more than the path she was on. And so it's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, working with uh, the NJTL and working with others, uh, it really helps out a, a lot of kids. Yeah, Ball State's gotten involved with us, which has been fantastic. We appreciate their support. But you know what, basically what we do is we work with the student athletes. You know, NJTL is obviously tennis. But we work with other sports and to be able to find out what their goals are, where they want to go, or even start to guide them to what goals they could have or possibly where they could go. And to get them that exposure by creating a, you know, a detailed profile on who they are, not just as an athlete, but as a person. What do they do? Do they volunteer for, you know, you know, the Special Olympics or another organization, you know, or try to raise money? Colleges nowadays, um, and I, I don't have the exact number, but you, you, I think you may, because I think you've had a past guest that was in missions that if you bring more to college and just being a student, you're an athlete, or you play an instrument, or you're in the plays, or, you know, that you bring more than just showing up. Um, there's a 20, approximately 20 to 30 percent more in funding for the same exact student who just shows up. And so to us, you know, and me as a person, I always found that I did and exceeded not only in the classroom, but in the practice field when I had a structured, organized day. I knew where I was going to get, what I had to do, what I had to accomplish before I went into the next aspect. So. Yep. Now, what, what are some of the uh, requirements that these students need to, to join or get into uh, the foundation? Well, what we've been doing in right now, the way it's set up is if a student athlete comes from a Title I district school um, in or, you know, in a financially challenging situation at home, we work with the student athletes then. Um, you know, they also have to have above a 3.0 GPA, and typically we start working with them the end of their junior year because they're in in some of some of the smaller sports. And I guess that's not the proper wording. The non-revenue sports tend to recruit that season during the season. There's some that are a little more, but the scholarship sports like basketball and football, I mean, you hear about them recruiting early. These sports, especially the smaller Division three schools that and the NAIA schools that have a lot of money, to be able to package student athletes, they um, they don't have the uh, recruiting budget to start so early. So we're able to get these student athletes that can compete on a pretty strong level into these programs and be viewed by this program. So kind of went on a tangent. So I, I think I answered the question. Yeah, absolutely. So give me a, a little bit of background on uh, your coaching career, because uh, the, there are a lot of students out there that, you know, some want to go to college and that's what they want to do after college is actually coach. How, how did they get into something like that? You know, it, it's, it's a great, it is a great profession. It's a challenging profession. It's a tough profession. But I still love hearing from players that I started to coach 20 years ago and just, hey, how have you been? I've been thinking about you. So it's the relationships you get to build. You know, what I would recommend if someone is interested in going into coaching and they have a plan, go ahead and utilize that from the beginning. Um, at the school that they start at, from high school all the way up to college, let people know that's kind of something they're thinking about, whether it's going to um, 
uh, remain in the college level or the professional level. It's really about networking and talking to people and understanding what they want. So, you know, my career path is I played at Maryland, and when I was finished there, the local high school that I went to asked me to come back and help out. Did that for two years, and then I was able to go to Montclair State University, work with Rick Giancola um, in their program there. They do a phenomenal job. They care about the athletes, and um, you look back on who kind of mentored you. You know, you had hit, uh, you know, Rick Giancola, Coach G, and Greg Arakillian really kind of took me under his wing, and he just um, was voted into the High School Hall of Fame wow. in New Jersey. And it was great to learn how to be a professional. Um, from there, kind of worked my way through, got my teaching degree, because um, I went back for that. Got into coaching arena football, did that for a lot of years before I worked with the uh, New York Giants as a scout. And then I also uh, went back and coached at St. Peter's College in Jersey City when they had football. Um, and then kind of finished up. I, and I still scout for the uh, Canadian football team up in uh, the CFL. Just won the Great Cup this past year, so it was pretty exciting. <laughs> that was kind of the path. But if you're a student athlete, student athlete and you're thinking, hey, I may want to coach, whether it's you know, on the high school because you're going to teach also, it's important that you start making connections and talking to people and let them know that it's something or a path that you're seriously considering. And you'll be amazed at how many people will be willing to help you out. So now when you're in college, are you networking in college or is it just the football team that you're, you're networking with? Well, in, hind in hindsight, I would have done more networking. <laughs> um, it would have taken a different path. I went a, a little more challenging, but um, I got where I needed to get to. Uh, if if you're a student athlete, I would talk to the coaches at the schools that you're at because, if, again, if you're a good person, if you work hard, you do the right things, people are going to help you out. So if I'm a tennis player and I'm working hard, and, you know, maybe I'm not the greatest tennis player in the world, but I do the right thing. I show up to practice. I'm on time. I'm dependable. I can communicate well. Those are all kind of characteristics that allow for someone to be a successful high school coach. And to be able to work that and now I can go I'm more apt to get a teaching position if I can do more than just teach if I can bring more to the table just like going to college interesting and and uh, when you're in when you're in college um, how about uh, how about when you're going through the football practices and things um, what are they like at the college level um, for, for a lot of these students that want to play sports at the college level is it really time-consuming you know practice and the games um, absolutely. I, I think I think what happens sometimes is the student athletes don't fully think it through. They think they show up and you know now they're playing Saturday night prime time ABC, and that's not the reality. It, it's when you become a college athlete or a college student athlete, you are really working a full time job. There is expectations. There's goal, and it is a job, and it's their business because you got to remember the college coaches. They're not teaching also. Majority of them, that's what they do for a living. And it really becomes a business. And that's unfortunately the ugly part of college sports is where you know you can show up and you can do all the right things, but if you're not gonna help them get a W, you're not gonna get on the field, especially in football or basketball, you know, when there's a lot of money at stake in not just scholarship money. I mean the revenues of those sports is incredible. So it was a job. It was, and when I was there, it was, there wasn't a day off. Nowadays, they have to have one day off a week. We didn't have that. I mean, it was seven days a week, and it was anywhere from five hours a day, plus getting prepped, film work, studying. Um, it is a job, and, and a lot of student athletes need to understand that. Once they have you, their next job is to find the person who's going to replace you. People don't like to hear that, but that's the reality. You know, it is competitive, and you have to work hard in the off season, and you have to be focused. And then you also have to balance classes and grades and doing well in, in social life. And you're away from home for the first time, a lot of people. It is a little bit of a juggling act, and to try to stay on the straight and narrow and do the right thing. So um, it's not for everybody, but. I would not trade my experiences, whether at University of Scranton or at the University of Maryland or anything. It was really a great run. And, you know, again, I'm thankful for it and the opportunity to be able to do so. 
And what do you see as what do you see as the differences between college and the pros, or college and the Canadian League, or college and the Arena Football League? Do you see a lot of differences? You know what? It, it's just like the filter. You know, I think it's six percent of all high school student athletes go and play in college. Um, so you take, uh, you know, you have a hundred, you break it down to six. So now six people go on. And, out of that six, I think it's only like 1% there goes on to the NFL or professional levels. And a lot of, a lot of different sports don't really have professional levels. So the window is so small um, and it, it gets better and better, the, the athlete. And trust me, I've seen my fair share of athletes and it's not just being athletic. It's being smart and understanding and, and understanding concepts and it's doing the right thing. As a coach, my theory was always I only had room for one person. I had to hold their hands. If I had to hold hands for a second person, someone was getting let go. Just didn't have the time. I pay you to do something. I pay you to exceed and excel and do what I expect. And so that's just how it is. And you see it over and over again, in the, especially in the NFL, because they're under such a microscope. And you have like Johnny Manziel right now. You know, he's a heck of an athlete. Who's going to argue that? It's just a train wreck the rest of his life. And, and as a coach, you don't want to deal with it. And I don't want to deal with that as a college coach. I don't want to deal with that as a high school coach. There's not enough time in the day for me to babysit people and do my job and be successful with the people I have that are doing the right things. So that, in character, you know, I'll take, I'll take a good athlete with great character over a great athlete with bad character any day of the week, all day. Yep. No, I, I agree with you. Uh, Basically, um, so when you're when you're looking at uh, athletes, is it really just like time management that the, a lot of these athletes need? Um, they need to focus on their their life skills as well. You know, it, it's a combination. Uh, time management is such a huge part of being a grown up. I mean, uh, you and I have had that conversation a million times. If we had better time management skills, we probably wouldn't have to keep having the conversation. But you know, the, the reality is, if you can have good time management, it's going to help you organize your day, your life, in what you have. The other thing I think is important is creating a list of priorities. And priorities change as you, as you go through life. Um, but if you have your priorities and you have time management, it makes it easier for your time management control. If I know getting a certain project done is the most important because it's going to allow my career to move forward then that's going to be my focus compared to you know me getting on social media and telling everybody what i had for dinner <laughs> you, you know it, those are really kind of crucial and you know to me character is always a big thing i've always been a character guy yep. uh, and so so how about uh for the foundation though um what do you see the foundation going where you know what, what do you want the foundation to do? To me, I want to try to restore hope, um, even if it's one person. You know, I, you know, I spoke about one of the first student athletes we had in the beginning and the success we had with her and how we gave them hope. Um, right now, I think with where America is, where we may be going, it's, it's scary because that seems to be the missing ingredient. And, you know, Listen, I'm not naive enough to think, oh, we sprinkle hope everywhere and everybody, everybody's kumbaya, and we're all hugging and dancing in circles. You know, but for what we do, to be able to alter a path or give someone a path that they may be able to capitalize and have success and then go back to their neighborhood or their community and to be able to contribute there and to help someone else. You know, what is, and I, I'm going to misquote this, I'm sure. <laughs> but in order to walk a mile, you have to take your first step. And that's what I think you and I have done with Foundation AR. And, you know, we may not be able to change the world, but we are going to change the world of someone, you know, someone's particular world. Good. And that's where I see it going. And I'd like to keep it growing. I mean, right now, we do need funds to help build that out because, you know, it's not, it doesn't happen but the results in it, like a $2,000 investment, someone's going to end up getting, you know, 
$120,000 to be able to go to school. Yeah. I mean, if, if you were, uh, if you're a finance person and someone says, give me $2,000 in four years, I'm going to turn it into 120,000. You'd be like, where do I sign up? <laughs> right? Yeah, sure. And so that's what we're trying to do is if we can continue to build out and help the student athletes and, you know, every year the number keeps increasing and we get more and more funding behind it, you know, you can see where we're going to make an impact. And again, it may only be the world of one person, but that one person could be the one who finds a cure for cancer or plays a pivotal role in changing what's happening in our country. Someone may become president, who knows? Um, but to me, it's nice to get, look in the mirror and realize that I've played a part in it. Good. Well, Jeff, we're coming to the end of our show. So uh, usually I ask my guests, um, what advice do you want to give to the parents out there that their sons or daughters looking into uh, maybe uh, applying for the foundation, maybe wanting to go to college to play a sport? What advice do you want to give to those parents? Yeah, what I would suggest, if you're interested in foundationar.org, to go online to either, you know, contact us through there by, you know, we have a um, ability to contact us via email there. If you're interested in making a donation, you know, same thing, please get in touch with us. We'd love to be able to work with the other companies as well. Um, as a parent, whether it's through the foundation or from yourself going through the recruiting process, hey, find a reputable company to work with, you know, to learn and understand the process. Because you really need to follow a plan. You need to be proactive. No one's coming to you now. You have to take it to their doorstep. And three, realistic expectations. You know, you talk to families and they think, you know, oh, my kid, my son, my daughter, they're the greatest or the best. And they may be on their team, but there's a big world out there. Tennis recruits, the majority of top tennis players come from outside the U.S. You know, football, people are getting recruited as early as seventh grade. So, you know, stay focused. Do what you're supposed to on the field and in the classroom. Because you're going to get more money from the classroom than on the field in the majority of cases. You know, but be realistic. Playing Division Three, there's a lot, especially if you're football or basketball, there's a lot of Division Three players now getting opportunities in the higher levels. You know, but it's not a slap in the face if you're at a Division Three school. It is an honor to be on the field. It is a privilege to play football for any field or on any team, or for that matter, tennis, track, you know, softball. Whatever the sport is, it is a privilege to play college athletic, uh, athletics and to treat it that way. Well, good. Thank you very much, Jeff, for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you, Anthony, for all you've done and for having me on the, phone, or on, on the show today. I appreciate it. No problem. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.